What's going on YouTube? DVD Builds here back with another video today and in today's video I'm going to be giving you my top five builds since the new patch. That's right, top five builds. All of these builds are unique. They're all different from each other. One of the things I kept in mind while putting these builds together is that I don't want to reuse the same perk in every build. So there's five different builds, 15 different perks because one perk got used twice. I was trying to avoid it, but that perk is just really good right now that I had to throw it into two of these builds. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting from build number five, which is going to be the meta build. So anyways, the meta build. This is going to be probably the four most meta perks out of all the builds. And this build is for anybody who just wants to play the game and wants probably the highest chance of winning. These are all very strong perks. For starters, we're using Unbreakable. The only perk in the game that lets you recover from the dying state increases your dying state recovery speed by 35%. So if you get slugged, you can get up and pick yourself up from the ground. This opens up the opportunity for some clutch plays, some epic moments, on games that would have otherwise been lost, you actually are able to come back and win the game. Unbreakable is great. Like in the most competitive Survive with Friends, there's usually at least two to four Unbreakables being run. So of course, Unbreakable's gotta be in the meta build. Second perk, Sprint Burst. Arguably the best exhaustion, burst, exhaustion perk since the Dead Hard nerf. Sprint Burst lets you run 150% faster for three seconds. And then it has a 40 second cooldown. There is a little bit of a learning curve to getting your sprint burst 99 so that way you can run around the entire time and then when you get into chase, stop running for a quick second and then run away. But even if you're just using it and wasting it like running from gen to gen, it still saves you a lot of time. So even if you're not the best at managing your sprint burst, this exhaustion perk is still definitely probably the best one since the patch. But there's a lot of actually good options and we'll talk about it later on in this video. Off the record, the third perk. You already know it, man. Probably one of the best perks since the new patch. As in, this perk used to just, you would look at it and you're like, ah, there's no really, not really any point in running it. It doesn't really appeal to me. But since they reworked it, this perk is literally just great because there's no longer any iron will. So off the record, there's a couple things for us. Once you get unhooked, you have 80 seconds, guys. 80 seconds, that's a considerable amount of time to have a perk activated. And during those 80 seconds, you will A, your aura won't be shown to the killer, so if there's any barbecues and chilies or any aura reading perks for the killer, they will not be able to find you. So this helps to prevent you from being found, this helps prevent you from being tunneled. If the killer does find you, you actually have the endurance status effect for these 80 seconds, assuming you don't do any conspicuous actions. That is working on a gen, healing somebody, progressing the game in any ways. Um, just Google it if you don't know what the conspicuous action thing is. But essentially it's interacting with the game. Um, but you get the endurance effect. So you can take a free hit when you come off the hook. So you have 80 seconds of being hard to find. 80 seconds to take an extra hit. And then also your grunts of pain are reduced by 100% which is great. So this is going to make you hard to find, hard to track. And if they do find you, you still get to take one free hit for 80 whole seconds. So this is probably the best perk to avoid getting tunneled and the best perk for just trying to last longer in the game. And since Iron Will is nerfed and only hides your grunts of pains by 75%, 100% is kind of a big deal right now. And last but not least, we are running Prove Thyself. The generators, since the new patch, take much longer to do. 90 seconds you almost need to have one or two prove thyself in your squad. So rather than just hoping that your allies have it, just bring it yourself. 15% repair speed bonus for each survivor working on the generator. So normally if two survivors work on a generator, there's a little penalty and it's actually 15%. So you're actually doing the generator less efficiently than you would if you were both working on separate generators. Prove thyself nullifies that. So you actually do get to finish the generators quite a bit quicker and then if you have more survivors on the gen gen speed kind of insane so this is the meta build guys for those of you out there who are just trying to play the game and have the biggest chance of winning this is a lot of second chance perks a lot of perks to keep you in the fight a lot of perks to progress the game and good exhaustion perk for avoiding the killer well, let's get into build number two ladies and gentlemen build number two 
I am calling the solo queue build. So if you play solo queue a lot, like I do, and you want the best chance of winning and bringing your inefficient, uncoordinated team to victory, then this is probably a build you want to take with you. To start things off, we are using Prove Thyself again. This is the one perk that got used in two different builds just because it is so good. I just explained what it does. No need to really talk about it here. But we're using Boon Circle of Healing. This lets us bless a totem on the map and then anybody in the totem range can heal without a medkit and then everybody who gets healed gets a 50% healing speed bonus to healing actions. So what this is gonna do is pretty much make a beacon of healing for your team. So that way, literally anybody on the map can see where the boon's at. So even if your team's completely uncoordinated, this perk can let you A, heal yourself, B, your teammates can go heal themselves in the boon radius whenever they want to. It's just really good for solo queue because you just, you put the boon on the map and then hopefully the team is smart enough to actually make value out of it. That being said, the theme is doing things that kind of help the team, so prove thyself. You repair with your teammates, you do things quicker, progress the game quicker. The boon circle of healing, everybody can see where the boon is at. They can go heal in the boon range. This is helping your team and also helping you. We're also using Kindred, probably the best solo queue perk out there, guys. When you are on the hook, the killer's aura is revealed within 16 meters. And not even just you. If you're on the hook or anybody's on the hook, you can see the killer's aura around the hook. So that way, people can go get a safe hook rescue safely knowing the killer's not camping. But not only that, but you can see all of the other survivors' auras when someone's on a hook. So let's say someone's on a hook and then there's like two people far away in the corner doing a gen. This way you know, oh, okay, I need to go rescue this teammate. Or if you're across the map and someone's on the hook, you can see what everybody's doing. So you can see if somebody else is going in to get the safe hook rescue. So you know if you need to stay on that gen or if you need to actually run and go across the map because your teammates are idiots and doing something else like looting chests or I don't even know. Um, so that's kind of the point here. We have Kindred to give us that value. Works great for us. And then if you are the one that's on the hook, then everybody else can see everybody else's auras. So ideally, unless you're just playing with some crazy, <laughs> like just bad teammates, people should be able to figure it out and know who needs to go in and do the rescue. So Kindred, Boon Circle of Healing, Prove Thyself, last but not least, the new Dead Hard. This perk is actually pretty good, guys. I will warn you, though, you have to practice with it. And it's definitely not as good as it used to be, but it's still solid. It's like the only perk in the game that really gives you a second chance. Once you activate it, once you're injured, for half a second, you can pretty much take a free hit without going down. That being said, you get the little speed boost after you take a hit. Maybe you get away. It extends to chase some. This is the only perk that really kind of just gives you like a quick second chance if you time it right. If you're not that good at the game and you haven't got your dead hard timings down, I would sub this out for Sprint Burst or Life. Any of those other exhaustion perks would work just fine. But this here, guys, is the solo queue build. Probably the best build to run if you're just hopping in solo queue with random teammates. Let's get on to the next one. Build number three, you already know, it is the Lucky Break Slippery Meat build. And no, we're not running Slippery Meat. I say Slippery Meat because when you're running this build, guys, you are slippery and the killers will have a hard time catching you. Guaranteed. Especially if it's on an indoor map where this build excels at. But it's still good on regular maps as well. So the theme of this build is Lucky Break. Literally my favorite perk change since the new patch. When you take a hit... For 60 seconds, you will not leave any blood or scratch marks. So this makes you really hard to track, especially if you can break line of sight from the killer. They're not going to have an easy time finding you. But also, to pair this off, since this activates after you take a hit and become injured, it makes perfect sense to use it with Overcome. This extends your speed boost from getting hit by two extra seconds which is a lot, so you get hit, and then you run the hell away, get as far as you can, break line of sight, couple, cut a couple corners, and just gain massive distance. So one, once the killer loses line of sight on you, 
they're going to have a hard time finding you. Two, you're not leaving any scratch marks. Three, you're not leaving any uh, blood. The only thing they can use to track you is your aggressive pain, which is why we're taking Bite the Bullet. So ideally with this build, you take a hit, you run, you cut a couple corners, you find some place that's safe and just far enough from the killer, and then you start using your med kit. This build, you actually do need to build a med kit in it because we're not going to be using self-care with it. So it doesn't matter what med kit, just make sure you have at least two charges in your med kit. Like this gives me two charges. You could use the yellow med kit with a little add-on to get uh, two charges. A ranger med kit with a gel dressing and three charges. It doesn't matter. Just bring like a med kit with at least two charges. You could just bring a regular med kit with one charge, but you'd kind of just be shooting yourself in the foot. You want to at least be able to pull this combo off twice in one match. If not, maybe three times. So anyways, you get hit, run away, you disappear. Then you start healing yourself with Bite the Bullet. This makes it to where you make no sounds when you're healing. Also, no sounds when you're healing your allies. And then a little extra bonus, if you fail a skill check, the regression is only 1% instead of the normal amount. But that part's not really that big a deal. The big deal about this is that it makes you quiet. So you could just disappear and vanish. And then it's so funny when this happens. The killers literally have no idea what's going on. They're like, what? And I've actually had killers disconnect because they got frustrated. Because I was using Lucky Break. One of my teammates was using Lucky Break. And after like three Lucky Break escapes, this guy just like quit. He's like, all right, this is frustrating. And he just DC'd. It was hilarious. One of the best things I've ever seen. Last perk with this build, though, to bring it all together, is Empathy. Because Lucky Break, you can actually refill the charges on it when you're healing a teammate. Like I said, you get 60 seconds of use, but then every one second spent healing an ally, allies take 16 seconds to heal, you end up getting a charge of Lucky Break. So you get 16 seconds back every time you heal somebody. So Empathy makes a lot of sense, so that way we can see who's injured, Go heal them, get our lucky break charges back, so we can just keep looping this combo as many times as possible during the whole game. And that is awesome. Also, Empathy is just a really solid perk, guys. Like, 128 meters, you get to see your injured allies. That's like the whole map. So you can always see who's injured, what's going on. If you see somebody get injured, they pop up on the map, then you know they're in chase, you know the killer's across the map. Like, this perk just gives you so much good value. So this is it. This is the build, guys. A lot of fun. I will say one thing, though. There is an honorable mention that could be used instead of empathy. And that is quick and quiet. The reason why I say this is a really solid alternative to empathy is because, like I said, the whole point of this build is disappearing. If you have quick and quiet, then you also have the option to just take a quick vault and vault around a window or a pallet or jump into a locker. Even though you probably wouldn't want to do that. You just want to heal it by the blood. But anyways, the point is like this actually opens up a few extra avenues and ways to disappear, i.e. just by vaulting something. So this could be a lot of fun too, but I think empathy overall is more consistent because you want to be able to consistently get your lucky break charges back. But Quick and Quiet is a solid alternative. If you want to be extra, extra sneaky, you can sub this out for Empathy, and that's no problem at all. Let's get into build number four. Build number four, guys. The Totem Lord build. We're running small game. This has like a little 45-degree cone in front of you that makes a little no noise notification whenever a totem is in range. So that way you can find the totems easier. If you're like just really good at this game and know where all the totems are at, you could maybe pass on this for something else, but the other thing Small Game does is it actually keeps track of how many totems have been cleansed on the map, so that way you're not wasting your time looking for all five if you're trying to cleanse them all to prevent any endgame no-ed plays, which I have actually cleansed all five totems before the end of the game and played against killers who like attack you and they think they're going to go down with no-ed and then they realize there's no more totems. Then you look in the end game, see what perks they're running, and you're like, oh my god, he was so mad. You know, it's a lot of fun. So small game to find the totems because this is a totem based build. We're using counter force. This lets us cleanse totems 20% quicker. And then once we cleanse a totem, we can see the furthest totem on the map. So that way we have an idea where the next totem might be. And then we get a stackable 20% bonus to totem cleansing speeds, which is also pretty cool, which means as we cleanse totems, we do it a little bit quicker and quicker as the game progresses which is awesome because this build is based around cleansing totems, and it's also really excellent against any kind of hex-based killer play. You know, hex ruin, hex plaything, 
Hex Pentimento. There's a lot of really nasty hexes out there. Undying. You name it. Like, this is just a good build to get rid of all those hex totems. And since we're cleansing totems, we've got to be using inner healing. Every time we cleanse a totem, we can get in the locker, and then in eight seconds, we'll be healed. It's that simple. It's just a free pocket heal we can get anytime we run into a locker. But also, since we're cleansing totems, we're using overzealous, guys. Once you cleanse a totem, you do generators 8% quicker, which is great because these generators take a long time. But not only that, if you cleanse a hex totem, you get double the bonus. So you are cleansing 16% quicker. I mean, doing gen 16% quicker. And honestly, that's really badass, man. 16% extra gen speed. You're going to feel like you're flying through those gens. The downside of this perk is that when you lose a health state, it deactivates. But it has so much synergy because when this perk deactivates, you already have inner healing. So you just go back into a locker, you heal yourself, and then you go find another totem. And you already know where it's at with Counterforce. And then you cleanse it, cleanse it faster, and then you have your combo back up again. So this is probably my favorite build to take a flashlight with. Normally I love bringing med kits, but with this build, you don't need the med kits because you get your healings with inner healings, you get extra gen speed, and then you can use your flashlight to save people, be annoying, do whatever you want. Item doesn't really matter, but I love taking a flashlight with this build. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into build number five. For build number five, we have the ultimate unhooking build. Based around, well, you heard it, unhooking and healing. This is a very altruistic healing based build that's going to help keep your teammates alive and give you some pretty cracked out unhooking and healing speeds. For starters, we have We'll Make It. This perk activates whenever you unhook a survivor and then for 90 seconds you have 100% increased healing speed when you heal other people. This turns your 16 second heal into a 8 second heal which is really really quick guys. You can heal people really fast with this perk and 90 seconds is a long time like even after initially healing somebody like you still have this perk for a minute and a half which like trust me there are times where like a minute goes by and i still have like 30 seconds left of this perk and then someone else is injured or someone slugged and i still get extra value out of this perk like it is unexpectedly good how good this perk is but we're also bringing we're gonna live forever this perk lets you heal people in the dying state 100 percent quicker so anybody who gets slugged you can pick them up twice as fast but not only that if you have will make it active as well that's actually 200 percent extra speed while picking someone up off the ground which is really quick and when it does work out like that it's so fun to see guys you get them up hella quick but we're gonna live forever actually has a second effect to it the second effect activates when you a do a safe hook rescue take a protection hit rescue a survivor by stunning or killing the killer stunning not killing stunning the killer with the pallet or blinding the killer, getting a flashlight save, whatever, you name it. The second part of this is when you pick a survivor up from the dying state, they get endurance for 10 seconds. So that means with your cracked out healing speed, you pick someone up who's gotten slugged on the ground. Once they get up, they have 10 seconds that they're gonna for sure not go down. Kind of badass. And also fits with the theme of unhooking because when you unhook somebody, you will activate the second part of this perk anyways. Third perk. Desperate measures, we're unhooking, we're healing. For each injured or hooked slash dying survivor, we get a 14% bonus to healing and unhooking speeds. So this is going to let us unhook people a little bit quicker. If we have four stacks, it's 54%, I think, 56%. Uh, what is it, 14, 28, 32, 42, 46, 56%, yes. So that's 50% extra possible healing speed. On top of, like, it might be crazy if this ever happens where all four of these perks are active at once, but 50% extra speed on top of this 100, on top of this 100, you kind of get the vibe, guys. We're healing insanely quick at times, but also unhooking really quick. And then the last perk for this build, since the theme is unhooking and healing, we had to go with No One Left Beyond. One of my personal favorites since the new patch, my only regret is that a lot of times you don't get to the end game and then this perk is essentially dead but when you do get to the end game you get a lot of really cool benefits from it one hundred percent extra blood points for healing and unhooking people all right that's cool two fifty percent action speed 
when healing and unhooking survivors. So this is another 50%, guys. So we have 50%. If we had four stacks of this, that's 56%. So that's 106%. If we have this, then what? Another 100%, so 206%. And then <laughs> we're going to live forever? Like, so that's a lot of healing. I don't know if there's a cap on healing percentages, but if there was, this build for sure hits it. But the other really cool part about this is that when you unhook somebody, it's 50% unhooking speed on top of desperate measures. So this is like the, the fastest unhooks you will ever see happen ever, which is awesome. No One Left Behind also gives the player you unhook a 7% movement bonus for 10 seconds. Remember, there's built-in borrow time now. So everybody has 7% extra speed and endurance for five seconds. This is actually gonna turn that 7% extra speed to 14% for five seconds, and then they'll go down to 7% for the next five seconds. So that's a lot of speed. So whoever you unhook is for sure getting out. They're getting unhooked quickly, and they've got movement speed. And then the last thing this perk does is actually shows you the auras of your entire team in the end game, which is awesome. So you can see where everybody's at. You can see who needs to get healed, etc., etc., etc. This is the ultimate unhooking build. And actually, guys, <laughs> I am going to leave you with two bonus builds. That's right, you heard it. Two bonus builds. They're one of them just mi missed the top five, so I need to talk about it. And then the other one I didn't include in the list because I didn't want to recycle too many perks, and this is also another Prove Thyself build. But let's go ahead and get into the bonus builds for you guys. All right, guys, we have the build that just missed my top five list. And the reason why it missed my top five list is because there is a good chance that all these perks do absolutely nothing for you <laughs> but when these perks do work this build is a lot of fun we're bringing unbreakable with us this lets us recover from the dying state and we recover quicker so we're pairing it with tenacity this lets us crawl 50 percent quicker and recover at the same time and then also our grunts of pain in the dying state are reduced by 75 percent. so we'll be a little harder to find so ideally what we want to be doing with this build is actually like if someone's getting carried to hook like just body block and go down like that's literally not an issue you just want to stall them from getting the hook and since the killer is carrying another survivor they can't pick you up right away which is where this build sucks like if you get down instantly and then they pick you up right away these perks literally do nothing but if you just like go down while the killer is trying to take one of your teammates to the hook then you have time to crawl away time to recover time to get charges built for these other perks we're going to talk about flip flop when you're in the dying state, 50% of your recovery progression is converted to wiggle progression. So the more you get to heal with these perks while running away on the ground, if you get picked up, you will get some of your wiggle bar filled. So hopefully you could wiggle out before you make it to the hook. Hopefully. That doesn't always happen, so the last perk is boil over. Boil over probably the only perk that's going to make us annoying when being carried to the hook we wiggle 80 percent harder against the killer so this is going to help get them stuck maybe save us a couple seconds here and there which could prove to be vital to actually let us wiggle out in time and there have been games where i like wiggle out multiple times and it's literally the best thing ever but not only that if the killer does drop from great heights while carrying you you get 33 33 percent wiggle progression so the theme of this build guys is get slugged you don't really care you have a good chance of wiggling out you can get up from the dying state as well this is just a really really fun build but also it does have the potential to do absolutely nothing but if it does work out for you then it's going to be really really fun and that's what we're here to do guys we're here to have fun and now for the final bonus build <laughs> y'all are spoiled man I'm giving y'all two builds my final build for you guys is the Generator Shredder build. This is a build for you guys who just do not want to waste time doing generators and you want to finish it as quickly as possible. So this build, it is mandatory to bring a Commodious Toolbox. It's the one with 32 charges that increases your repair speed by 50%. 
put on some awesome add-ons. I'm using scraps and a wire spool to add 20 charges to this already 32 charge toolbox. And we're bringing built to last with us. Once we burn through this toolbox, we can refill the charges by hiding in a locker for 12 seconds. The first time we get 99% of our charges back, the second time it's 66%, and then the last time it's 33%. But all in all, it's pretty much three full uses of a toolbox we get, which is awesome, because this setup right here, is it's a really good dent on the generators. I think you finish like almost 70% of it with the setup and the perks I'm gonna talk to you about. We're using blast mine since the whole point of this build is to be working on generators. This makes a lot of sense because after 66% of a generator has been repaired, we can put a trap on it. If the killer hits this trap, it blows up in their face, they get blinded, they get stunned. I think it lasts like four seconds. It's hilarious and so fun when it works. But the other reason why we're using this perk is because when we mark a gen with blast mine, it glows yellow so your allies can actually see the gen you're working on so ideally in a perfect world they'll come work on the gen with you and if they do come work on the gen with you we're already shredding through this with the fast toolbox we're already getting our charges back we're already putting the blast one on it we also have prove thyself they see the gens your teammate comes to help you do the gens then you get the extra 15 percent from prove thyself so then you're just it's it's not even funny man you're shredding through this gen so quick it's amazing and then just just to add insult to injury, guys, the last perk I'm using is Streetwise because it's funny as hell, guys. This literally reduces our item consumption rate by 25%. And it also works for our allies, too, if they have items with them. But this is going to give us 25% extra charges on a already ridiculous amount of charges. Like, I'm not kidding, guys. Like, you just chill on that gen and you do work, and then you mine it up, and then you win the game, and you get out of there. The Gen Shredder build. <laughs> it's just a lot of fun, man. I, I love using this build. It's hilarious. Anyways, guys, that's going to conclude my top five builds, plus my two bonus builds. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the content. Also, subscribe. I feel like we can turn this YouTube channel into one of the big YouTube channels for Dead by Daylight. And all you got to do is leave a like for the algorithm, leave that subscribe button if you enjoy this video, and then, you know, hit the bell if you want to see all my uploads. I'd be completely flattered and humbled. Anyways, guys, I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out.